Black Box Podcast, BBOR, Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia. Today we're going back to 2015, very specifically to the town of Springfield, Missouri, to re-examine the case of Gypsy Rose Blanchard and the murder of her mother, Dee Dee Blanchard. Now, finally, I got around to watching the series The Act. I'm about halfway through, um, just uh, when... Yeah, about halfway through the series, signed up for, you know, the uh, Hulu free trial. It had been something that I'd been meaning to do for a while, ever since I first learned about Gypsy Rose Blanchard. I learned about the series The Act on Hulu. Now, this is not really going to be any sort of uh, kind of TV review. On this channel, we've never really done things like that. This is just going to be a discussion on Gypsy Rose Blanchard. So if you haven't seen the show The Act yet, it's fine. You can stay tuned, and we're just going to talk a little bit about the case that's the case at hand. What I would say is that um, I really feel that one of the things that is very much neglected with the case of Gypsy Rose Blanchard is the kind of abuse that she suffered growing up, and the show The Act really tries to highlight that. And if you're an absolute newcomer to the case, Gypsy Rose Blanchard was the victim of Dee Dee Blanchard, who was suffering from Munchausen Syndrome by proxy, where she was forcing her daughter to kind of live with a series of illnesses that weren't actually there. She she was telling people that her daughter had leukemia and muscular dystrophy, as well as a host of other things, allergies that didn't exist, as well as um, sleep apnea. And some of the things, though, that um, I felt were somewhat ne neglected by the media coverage in the surrounding materials were just Gypsy Rose's upbringing. Like, because Dee Dee Blanchard, the abuser, was murdered, there it becomes, like, this entire focus on, well, who really is Gypsy Rose Blanchard? Is she a, uh, is she also a manipulator? And of course, she got convicted for it, and she's serving 10 years in prison right now for being a conspirator in the murder of Dee Dee Blanchard. But what I would say is that um, growing up, we don't really get an enormous window into the sort of horrific experiences that someone would have ha would have had just learning that their mother was deceiving them the entire time and forcing them to live in such a confined and abusive way, especially when, um, you know, it's like when you, Gypsy Rose Blanchard said very clearly in an interview that she was confined to a wheelchair for most of her life, but she knew that she could walk. But she didn't know about all of these things like leukemia and muscular dystrophy and the allergies. She didn't know that that stuff was fake. And even in the show, the act, they had one sentence when she once she learns how to walk or remember or just, you know, she like recognizes that she has, you know, very strong use of her legs. Her mother just tells her, you can't do it for very long or you're going to get very sick. That's why she has the wheelchair. I felt one of the things that was very much um, kind of neglected from the show, the act, though, was Gypsy Rose's father, who um, he's just like kind of really seems cut out of the life. But in real life, when you listen, you can listen to countless interviews with Gypsy Rose Blanchard's father online, and you see that he did have a certain amount of interaction with the family. And um, something, though, really stood out with that. Like, the show The Act really tries to sort of present something in a way that Dee Dee Blanchard was also the victim of psychological abuse from her mother, and that her mother, Gypsy Rose's grandmother, that is, was trying to just kind of take control of Dee Dee's life and just be a very rough and manipulative type, which I'm sure all is true. But a big thing that they left out was... About three months after Gypsy Rose Blanchard was born, her mother started telling people that she has sleep apnea. She created the first fictitious illness for Gypsy Rose three months after she was born. And it's like, this is the stuff that the father is knowing about. And, um, you know, like when people see the interviews with Gypsy Rose Blanchard's father, I mean, he's, um, he has a Cajun accent. He's kind of like, a very well-dressed, attractive man, and a lot of people are just like, why did this good-looking guy end up with Dee Dee Blanchard, who was, you know, overweight and just so, kind of like a hag, for lack of a better term? I don't have to be too kind to her. She was a disgusting, child-abusing monster, but it's like, yeah, she looks like a hag. Well, like, why, why, why were these two people getting together? Somebody left an interesting comment about that, and they said that based on the manipulative personality type that Dee Dee Blanchard had, she might have gotten pregnant on purpose just a way to lure Gypsy Rose's father into her life and, you know, like, kind of have an unbreakable bond between them. But, I mean, you know, it's like this is... 
when you're watching this uh, show, and when you're just learning about Gypsy Rose Blanchard in general, this is one of the things that you just sort of think that it's so hard not to just become overwhelmed with emotion, but you don't exactly know what to feel, and that's the best way that I can describe the case of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, because you have this person who is just a complete victim. I mean, like, who starts out as a complete victim, we should say, and that's Gypsy Rose being forced to sit in a wheelchair all the time when she is when she doesn't really need it, going through countless medical operations, the removal of her salivary glands, just like all of these things, and having the feeding tube, when they would change G D Gypsy Rose's Blanchard's feeding tube, they did it without anesthetic, and it just sounds like she went through a lot of physical pain in addition to the emotional pain, not to mention taking all the medications that she didn't need. That must not have been very pleasant. It's just like, okay, so that's just horrendously abusive. Then it turns into the story of murder. Gypsy Rose Blanchard, of course, begins corresponding with an individual named Nick Godijan. And one of the things, though, that they haven't mentioned yet, like I said, I'm only halfway through the series of the act, but Nick Godijan was dealing with autism spectrum disorder. And, I mean, they just really didn't seem to highlight that very much. Okay, we can get that, you know, he's kind of um, an awkward guy. But, um, or just that even when they sort of say that he has kind of like mental issues. But, no, very specifically, he had autism spectrum disorder. And a lot of people believe that he was just like Gypsy Rose's, you know, had completed her quest to find the most likely candidate to commit the murder. And that's the way that I really noticed that the kind of even the documentary coverage surrounding Gypsy Rose Blanchard began to follow. They really just wanted to kind of, it's like the tables have turned now. And then they're like, she goes from victim to manipulator. And I'm like, oof. I mean, it's it's something that, you know, once again, you don't really know what to feel because I can't imagine what it would be like being forced to live a life with all of those, you know, f fake illnesses and just kind of finding out that your mother is betraying you. And you even have things like Dee Dee Blanchard would falsify documents to make it appear that Gypsy Rose was younger than she actually was. And um, we learn about that through the, sh through the series. But I mean, that was, like, genuinely real stuff. They had one incident that I believe was altered for the series where, um, the, in the, I believe the true account is that Gypsy Rose got in touch with a guy and they began corresponding and they ended up meeting up in a hotel room. I think in the show they met up in his house, but they meet up in a hotel room and the way that uh, Dee Dee Blanchard lured her out was she um, was able to kind of slip the guy... G Gypsy Rose's falsified birth certificate and was just like, what are you doing with this girl? She's underage. I mean, they did that all verbally in the show, but I believe that like the actual kind of the, the kind of accurate account was that, yeah, she was able to slip him in her birth certificate and you're like, you got to give me my daughter back. You know, she's only, you know, well, 14 or something, whatever it was. But of course, um, I think that a lot of people are very quite skeptical about well, I don't know if skeptical is the right word. Maybe they're just very concerned about the entirety of the medical process because the show The Act bring, highlights a very interesting point when they're like, they have this doctor who is becoming somewhat um, skeptical of Dee Dee Blanchard. Like, what's really going on? I don't believe that this girl actually has these medical conditions. But at the same time, nothing is followed up. They, like, they started investigating a little bit but they don't follow through with it. And a lot of people see this very clearly in the case of Dee Dee Blanchard. They're like, the system failed her. And in many ways, the system also failed Nick Godijan. And it's like, you can see very clearly that this is how the kind of destructive spiral begins to spin out of control. So with the case of uh, Dee Dee Blanchard and Gypsy Rose Blanchard, you can just sort of see that um, it's sort of a multi-generational thing. I do accept, though, that there was a certain sense of psychological problematic issues that Dee Dee Blanchard had growing up, and that was passed down to her. Then Dee Dee passes it down to Gypsy Rose Blanchard, and maybe, this is going to sound really, really sort of pessimistic about humanity, but maybe it's a good thing that Gypsy Rose Blanchard went to prison. Maybe that is in some way and somehow a way to break the cycle of destructive behaviors in the sense that um, it won't really kind of escalate too much anymore but we don't know that i mean because we don't really know what's going to happen to gypsy rose blanchard when she gets out supposedly she's now engaged and she has a, n a new fiance that is not nick go to john 
And there was a YouTube channel that, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's probably still up, it was called The Rewired Soul, that had a lot of discussions about Gypsy Rose Blanchard. I mean, I, to be honest, I don't even know if the guy does anything else other than that. I mean, the only videos I've seen from him talk about Gypsy Rose Blanchard, and uh, once again, it's called The Rewired Soul. But his real, real stance on it is just that we shouldn't really be too sympathetic towards Gypsy Rose Blanchard because she's a manipulator, especially because of the way that she manipulated Nick Godijan. Once again, someone who was dealing with autism spectrum disorder, someone who didn't really have the cognitive faculties to sort of um, respond in a completely sort of appropriate manner, and he was in short manipulated into committing the murder of Dee Dee Blanchard. But the thing is, though, I mean, what, um, in the show, the act, like, uh, the, the character playing the mother of Nick Godijan was saying that he has the ability, sort of the mental functioning of a 15 or 16 year old. But the thing is, though, even if someone's 15 or 16, they're still expected to know that they shouldn't be murdering people. But the whole point is, um, the whole point of the thing, I believe the argument from the rewired soul is that he was coaxed into it. He was kind of um, deceived and duped. And in short, Gypsy Rose Blanchard kind of created this kind of false, fictitious narrative. Like, she didn't care about him at all. She needed somebody to murder her mother so she could get away from her mother. And uh, this guy was the most likely candidate. But um, I guess that's kind of just where that story, that story is ending because those two have just kind of separated. And I don't believe that there's a lot of sympathy coming from Gypsy Rose Blanchard toward Nick Godijan. One of the things, though, is that um, I would have to say that when you're going to examine this, it's like, I don't think we should ever forget the sort of victimhood status of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. And I think, though, that this is also going to sound very, very weird, but if she had just committed the murder herself, she might have been given the same sentence, the same 10 years in prison, because lawyers do have the ability to do things like that. I mean, if um, it would really depend on the kind of circumstances surrounding her death, because I mentioned a recent case from Forensic Files that I had heard about where a man murdered his wife, but because his wife was having an affair, he got the murder charge dropped down to passion provoked manslaughter. I had never heard of this thing before. And it, that's not an isolated incident. Lawyers can do all sorts of things. I mean, look, look what happened, you know, with the Oster Pistorius uh, case and his charges were dropped to culpable homicide. All of like, they can reduce the charges. And it's very possible that Gypsy Rose Blanchard would have been given the same 10 years in prison. That man from Forensic Files that I mentioned got eight years in prison for murdering his wife in a very premeditated very premeditated fashion, mind you. So it's like, I don't know 100%, and we'll never know 100% because Gypsy Rose Blanchard didn't commit the murder. Nick Godijan did, and she is she is just kind of a conspirator, and orchestrator. However, there's a big thing to say about that, though, because um, I think people are get, taking into account a lot of the things associated with uh, Gypsy Rose's kind of... Um, sort of, what well, the passion provoked status that we mentioned, and the years of abuse that she had suffered. On this channel, we recently mentioned the case of Jennifer Mee, the, it was called the Hiccup Murder, but uh, Jennifer Mee was an orchestrator of a crime, and the crime, like, she was, they were meant to, they were, she orchestrated a robbery. The robbery got out of hand, and one of the individuals was murdered, and she was sentenced to life in prison. So it's like, it once again, it is how the lawyers spin it. And just yesterday, we were talking about the whole concept of just how, I mean, just sort of how the the legal system in America is broken, it is fractured, and it is the legal system that is kind of like really presented in sort of in a way that is pushing a lot of people toward destruction, and a lot of people are getting off very, very lightly. What I would say about the show The Act is that they really seem to highlight a very particular fat feature of Dee Dee Blanchard's personality. It really goes into the concept of just antisocial behavior. Because, yes, she's abusive, but, like, what's the heart and soul of it? Antisocial behavior really seems to be behind a lot of it. There's scenes of her shoplifting, as well as just, like, the lying, manipulating, creating fictitious stories. And, of course, child abuse that extends much more than just shaving her daughter's head and t lying to her about having leukemia is she's also 
like physically tying her daughter to the bed so she can't get up and move around. I mean, cases of physical abuse, as well as def there are definitive cases of physical abuse if she's giving her medication that she knows that she does not need. But I really think that um, this is like kind of a case of antisocial behavior that has just sort of erupted and gone out of control. And once again, this is a multi-generational thing. And that's a very, very kind of destructive facet. But the reason why I mentioned in this upload that um, we shouldn't lose touch with the victimhood status of Gypsy Rose Blanchard because I think that that's somewhat of kind of a minimization. I was listening to, I think it was actually the first documentary that I ever saw on this particular case. And what they were saying about it was, is that, that Gypsy Rose Blanchard is going to serve 10 years in prison for being a conspirator in the murder of her mother then she's going to go on to live a normal life. And, like, someone's just sort of saying, like, that, like, she didn't experience more than 20 years of child abuse. Like, she didn't experience just countless horrific incidents. And when, especially when you look back that your mother's just using you for money, just using you to get a free house from Habitat for Humanity, using you to just get people to send in donations because her mother doesn't want to work. That's bad. So it's like, once again, I really don't think they should downplay all of the abuse that Gypsy Rose Blanchard experienced and be like, eh, she, she, she'll get out in 10 years. She got off easy. Well, I mean, what about like the more than 20 years of abuse that she experienced? It's like she's been in prison her whole life. But that would not excuse her actions toward Nick Godijohn, someone that she, someone in a very gull, a gullible and weak position that she manipulated into a destructive act. As we said in the Blanchard family, manipulation and destructive behavior is multi generational. There are some major differences that I noticed about the show The Act and the uh, real story of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. I believe that um, they had some one incident where Gypsy Rose falls off of a trampoline and breaks her leg, or at least she gets injured, and then from that point on where she has to use a wheelchair. If, if I recall the actual historical account, it's like Gypsy Rose was told to use a walker for the most of her life. Like, I mean, like once the sort of Munchausen by proxy is really going out of control, she's told to use a walker. And then she's actually riding on the back of her grandfather's motorcycle and they get into a small accident. And from that point on, I believe that's after age seven, then she's in the wheelchair and that she, she would never get out of that until of course meeting with Nick Godijohn. I mean, this is just one thing where it's like, you really sort of see, though, the magnitude of how kind of far out that this particular case is. All of the people that knew Gypsy Rose Blanchard thinking that she couldn't walk, thinking that she had leukemia and muscular dystrophy. And once again, they changed some of the illnesses for the TV show. But um, And once they learned that all of that is fake and the person that you know, you've know you known down the street, D.D. Blanchard, has just been, uh, in short, poisoning her daughter and physically abusing her daughter to live in this particular way... I couldn't imagine, you know, if that's someone on your block. Once again, I think that's one of the reasons why this case fascinates us particularly, not only because of the bizarre nature of it, it's more of just the question, what do you really do? Like, how do you feel? How would you feel if this was somebody from your neighborhood and you learned that they are not only lying to you, but also abusing their child in this horrendously sick and destructive way? I think that that's one of the things that is pulling people in. They're just, they're completely perplexed about the situation. And a lot of people really want to just immediately vilify Dee Dee Blanchard, which they should. But the, the, the other thing to do about that is, what do you do with Gypsy Rose? What do you do with Nick Godijohn? And you can see, though, that um, this is just kind of a very tragic situation that became worse and worse and worse and worse. Although, I would say, though, one thing about the murder of Dee Dee Blanchard. Some people might say that someone like Nick Godijohn didn't seem to have a lot of high-functioning cognitive faculties, and that Gypsy Rose Blanchard was someone who was suffering abuse and, once again, kind of passion-provoked and all that. But their planning of the murder does not seem that different than an educated person. I mean, we got the people on the, all the forensic shows, doctors murdering their wives, doctors murdering their husbands, in the case of Kristen Rossum, who murdered her husband. But it's like, you really see, though, that the people who do get caught all leave very, very large tracks behind. It's all done in a very slop, 
be way and that has nothing to do with education that has nothing to do with intelligence that has nothing to do with anything other than just people have their reasons for committing murder and all their focus is on murder and not on getting away with it the case we just mentioned Kristen Rossum she was the toxicologist that poisoned her husband with drugs from her own toxicology lab where did they think that that was going to come from? Led the police right back to her, and then she was given life in prison, which uh, she deserved. But the thing is that it's like, just because um, I really don't think that, I guess I'm trying to say that just because Nick Godijan and Gypsy Rose Blanchard were not of the probably highest level of intelligence and experience and education and all of these things, that had no relevance on them getting caught People get caught because of sort of, um, well, just a lust for power and a lust for uh, kind of the committing the destructive action. That's what drives people to commit these murders. And all sorts of people from all sorts of backgrounds would have done that crime in the exact same way. Because people get put themselves in this sort of false sense of awareness, this overinflated sense of self-awesomeness where they're just like, I can't get caught. I'm going to create the perfect plan, even though it's incredibly sloppy. And I really have to say that a lot, in a lot of the times, in a lot of the unsolved cases, many of the times that that happens, that one of these cases goes unsolved for so long is because the police make critical errors during the early parts of the investigation. Like some evidence isn't preserved properly or... Maybe that they don't follow up with certain witness statements or they kind of look the other way with something. And that's no disrespect to police officers. I mean, our police officers and our forensics investigators solve an enormous amount of crimes. That's why we have all these shows that are kind of like forensic files telling us how they do it in 48 hours and, and court junkie and all of these things. They're telling us how the forensic investigators solve the show. I give them so much credit. But in many of the unsolved cases, there are often critical errors that are made by the investigators during the early portions of the investigation, during like the initial 24 hours of the investigation. And that leads to um, a lot of people getting away with it. But in the case of Gypsy Rose Blanchard and Nick Godijan, that really wasn't the issue. And it's just like they made some major errors and they got caught and I mean, Nick Godijan getting life in prison. What do you think about that? Do you think that was a just sentence? Gypsy Rose Blanchard getting 10 years in prison. What do you think about that as well? Do you think that she served the appropriate amount of time? And once again, though, I really have to say, if she had just committed the murder herself, and it's not like I want to advocate for violence, but if she had just committed the murder herself, they might have given her the same 10 years. They might not have given her life in prison the way they did to Nick Godijan. It depends on how the lawyers spend it. It also depends on the jurisdiction that you're in. It depends on the way in which the murder was committed. It's like the legal system is very, very technical. And that's all we can really say for now, and let's just leave it at that. What do you think about the case of Gypsy Rose Blanchard? What do you think about the um, murder of Dee Dee Blanchard and the accomplice Nick Godijan? Really, the perpetrator, Nick Godijan, Gypsy Rose Blanchard kind of became the accomplice in the legal standing. But Nick Godijan was definitely the perpetrator. What do you have to say about all of that? If you have any comments at all, please drop something below. And until next time.